My God. Look at this. Look at somebody shat all over my reel. Okay. Once again, if you're interested in this moisturizer, go to tackleadvisorsbeauty.com. And you too can get cancer today. And Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today I want to share with you a tool that literally overnight has become an essential part of my toolkit. That anytime I'm opening up any kind of reel, whether it's a conventional or a spinning, a bait caster, finesse reels, anything you can imagine, it's always right next to me, right next to my right knee on its hook. Because anytime I'm in a reel, I have a use for it. I, I don't think I've come across a tool other than my size zero Weera when it comes to working on fishing reels that is this handy. And it was sent to me by a subscriber, a gentleman by the name Ernie. He manufactures these. He's not making them on a large scale. They're not in any catalog. They're a couple West Coast tackle shops that he's supplying them to. And I brought it up the other day. I'm like, I'm going to be putting together a couple tool videos because that's one of the most common things I get to ask. What am I using? What screwdrivers? What wrenches? And I'm like, can I kind of highlight these? And initially, initially he was a little hesitant. And I, I mentioned in my initial email going out to him, if you can put together like a, a contact email dedicated just for these. And he did. So bearingbadtool at gmail.com. His name's Ernie. Serious inquiries only. I don't even know what his production capability is. I'm going to go over all the uses and kind of how they, they work and uses for them that you may find. In addition to fishing reels, I'm willing to bet if you guys are into the RC hobby, working around wheel bearings, will be just as useful. So if you're interested in these, go ahead, reach out to him. I'm not trying to sell these things again. If he can make five a month, I don't even know. So one tool that these things replace out of the box are bearing check tools. What a bearing check tool is, it lets you know if your bearing's corroded or bad. You just give it a spin, you listen, feel for some grit, feel some for some gunk or goo, see if they spin freely. So these are, between you know four and eight dollars depending on where you get them but if you look here boom same thing and you can go like this they'll never go anywhere which means you can take high pressure water soap whatever you're using i use a dental pick you know a dental irrigator from water pick it's almost like a miniature power washer and i shoot it on there works beautifully or you can even take a dremel tool and a, a brush attachment like a polishing wheel and you put it up next to it. Do I have my Dremel tool handy to show you? No. It would then spin this and it won't fly anywhere. So you can really get the, your, your spool bearing super clean. One of the, the most obvious uses. Uh, next up, you know, just to give you an idea, when you're working around drag stacks, here's a nasty one from a now retired, I think it's almost four years old, Daiwa BG. So what you can do here is, Take your bearing bad, go ahead and get it up inside there like so. Go ahead and get your, your pick tool in here. And boom, whole drag stack out all at the same time. We'll go ahead now and take a look at a smaller reel. This is the brand spanking new Shimano. Spheros Insure. And if you guys have been following me for a little bit and you saw the video I put out on the Stratic FL, I mentioned it'd be really nice if they kept the FK around and just dropped the, the price down a little bit. Boy, do they do that. That's exactly what this reel is. It's a Stratic FK with a lower grade bail arm. It's missing a ball bearing, a little bit different spool support. Um, essentially, everything else has uh, remained very similar. And then we have same thing. Boom. Whole stack out at the same time. Pop it back down. Put this back down in its place. That's what I should have done when it had the BG apart. So my bad on that. And we're really rushing. I'm trying to get through as many uses as possible in the shortest time. So I'm really trying to move. Sorry about that. So that's out of the way. And... For you guys out there that like to upgrade your handle knobs to ball bearings, one of the most pain in the ass bearings to deal with are those found in handle knobs. They're just kind of a pain. 
So you get the handle out or off. All right, so you lift that off. You don't want to pull out anything or have any drop off. So now you have a screw in the top, which we're going to gently place like so. And then you're left with a ball bearing that if you try to pick out, if you don't lift it out perfectly straight, it's going to bind up. So you can go like that and just really easily grab it. We just dropped a little bushing, a little spacer. And then we can go down here at the bottom. Like so, we have the bushing and spacer there. And now we have both of the handle knob bearings. Now these could also be bushings that you are upgrading and replacing the bearings. Now, if you're servicing a reel and you want to see if there's any damage or any corrosion in the, the handle knob bearings, which is very common, you can then cover two at the same time. And then you just go like this. Doo, 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 doo. Come here. Like so. And, and you get the point. So, another use. Out of the way. Done. <laughs> I'm going to try to move it along as quickly as possible. Uh, here is a example of a reel that I've seen examples on the internet a few times of people that try to get in the side plate to show you what these bushings are all about and they've been damaged. So where this comes in handy, let me first go ahead and remove this retaining clip. This one is under some serious tension. I'm doing my best to keep it in frame. But I don't want it to go flying across the room because that would suck. So you have the retaining clip there. And after any use and any exposure to the salt, if you're lucky, you don't have any buildup or any uh, mineral deposits left down here. Uh, if you're unlucky, you will, and getting that out is going to be a chore. Even with this, you got to be real careful. But you can get down in there and pull it right out. If you look on Tackle Tour, their review of the Z3, you can see that they clearly damaged it trying to get it out of it because it's a blind bore. You can't see it from the other side, which is where this tool really, really comes into its own. Ooh, what is that? I don't know what that was. Some schmoo in there. I'll just take it off this real quick. Again, I'm really rushing, so it may look like I'm a little clumsy. <laughs> not saying I'm not clumsy, but... Another example, when you're working on spinning reels, here's a Daiwa BG, and they have bearings down in here. So the, the bottom pinion support bearing, boom, just like that. Oftentimes you can get the bearing and the washer that's underneath it out at the same time. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but the bearing is always one that's a pain in the ass to get out. Now, if you're also in fish and saltwater reels, you may come across some side plate bearings that if there's any corrosion buildup, can be difficult to get out at times. These, these tools here that kind of have like a, a scissor action. You see that? If there's corrosion or if they're rusted in, as long as they're not really bad, you can get them out. Otherwise, <laughs> this brings up, you guys know I get sidetracked a lot. This is another little sidetrack. So the gentleman that sent me all the way from Australia, uh, Dio Exist, Abu MGX Extreme, actually, <laughs> this Chaldea. Here's a, here's a side plate from the Chaldea. Actually asked me if I had any uh, bearing pulling tools. I think that's where the conversation I might have brought up. I have one that I'll send him, and he said, "Oh, that'd be great." And he I, he sent me a link to something that he was interested in. But what I was going to send him were one of these. 
he wanted one of these, which Ernie from Bearing Bad just so happened to send me. So while I was indicating a tool like this, Ernie sent me something like this, which I don't even know if he is going to be mass producing these or not. But uh, if you do have a bearing in a blind hole, or even if it's not, even if it's a situation like this, or if you want to pull and in a reverse clutch out of a side plate that's kind of press fit in there. Basically what you do, you stick that in there, give this a couple turns, you don't want this on. This is not gonna be attached, you tighten that up. It spreads the jaws here, all right? So this is gonna go up in there. As you thread that collet on, it spreads the, here it grips the bearing. And then, boom. Give it a little bit of that shock to crack it loose. That's what Oscar from Australia was hinting about because he said he saw one uh, on the internet, but he didn't know where to find it or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, Ernie, he, he makes them too. <laughs> and he was kind enough to send me one. And uh, on a couple pen uh, internationals, it came in handy, and a Tiagra. So, moving along. Let's get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. Another thing that it comes in handy is when you're trying to pull a bearing out of a idler gear or part of the oscillation uh, drive setup for my Daiwa. Sometimes, <laughs> this one came out real easy. Sometimes they get locked in there with a little bit of corrosion or gunk. But again, it makes it super easy, barely an inconvenience. Next up. I think we're pretty much down to our last Mamma Jamma. And uh, this is Tranks 500. This is the uh, the biggest low profile on the market. The biggest low profile, I, what I consider a true low pro profile ever made. I know Wiki Jigging has theirs, or Jigging Master. You know what, before we go any further with this, I, I completely forgot, I'll show you a quick and easy one. One of the most common reels or real designs on the market uh, the Emoto, the Akios, the Abu Garcia round reel. This is a, a limited edition Emoto Will Power, named after Will Nash, who recently shattered a few uh, casting records. And see the spool design? It runs on this shaft, which is installed through the pinion. And this spool comes out completely separate. I'm not going to fatigue this metal retaining clip here, but you remove that little retaining wire, that shield, and then pull the bearing out of that side. And same thing. Boom. Super easy. Very, 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 very handy. This is a Zeta spool, by the way. Limited run spools, kind of like a veil and some of the high-end uh, spools from Japan. Made for tournament casting uses. Ultra lightweight, perfectly balanced. Now we're onto the tranks again. So yeah, this uh, this little tool has a ton of uses, and this last use, you can see this reel needs a little TLC. Ugh. One of the rare times I grab my size one posi drive instead of the size zero. What the hell grease is this? <laughs> what is this brown shit? <laughs> well, I don't remember using this. Huh, interesting. Interesting. What I wanted to show you is a mess <laughs> of a reel. Again, this thing has been rode hard and put away wet many a time. I think this is actually um, Max Performance Synthetic Grease from Royal Purple after it's come in contact with salt water. I'm 
Now, some reels have that handle shaft support bearing all the way down here. This is another perfect application for this tool here. But if you look here, this is your X ship bearing down in here. Sometimes after exposure, this one's been overly greased and it's very protected. Um, underneath this retaining cage here, there'll be a, a little bit of corrosion. Usually this bearing does a good job surviving, but if it doesn't, it can be a bitch to get out. That's where the, uh, the larger version of this is very helpful. The, the secondary pinion support bearing in saltwater reels can be sometimes difficult to get out because a lot of times if there is corrosion there, Shimano, I don't want to really say has that this issue, but the corrosion coating that they put on the inside of the frames on some reels gets very chalky and it'll really want to grip that bearing. And uh, having a way to pull it out from this side not having to go through the spool side is very, very helpful. Um, a lot of guys like using the Quantum Accurist PT, which I have, I have somewhere lying around here, uh, for fluke and saltwater. A lot of guys are using Daiwa Fuegos for inshore saltwater jigging, fluke jigging. Anytime you have an area where you have a pinion support bearing in that location, it can be a chore to get out. These make it easy. So it's with all that being said, I, I know it went a little long with this. I kind of rambled a little bit. I know it looks like something simple, but good luck finding it. I don't think I've ever come across a tool as simple to use as this. It's, it's just an essential wishbone type claw. You see that here? Very springy. And again, if I was if I were to show you me removing side plate spool bearings, you would go in, let it spread a little bit, and then keep on pushing, and it'll snap open. I haven't been doing that, but if you did do it that route, you would definitely hear that little snap, kind of like like that. So it has a really very good snap action to it. It's really cool. Here, we'll do that again. Nice little snappy snap action. But yeah, serious inquiries only. I don't want to overburden them with guys like, hey, what's the call stone? And uh, what happens if I use this on butterflies and dandelions? If you guys are working on reels, if you guys are serious about it, I would expect them just because of the, what's involved with manufacturing them in the $25, $20 range, something like that. Reach out to them, let them know what you need, and... Again, the most popular one I'm using is the smaller version of the spring jaw. The larger one, not as popular. If you're a freshwater guy, this. This, this, this all day, every day. If you're a saltwater guy, you probably want these two and maybe the silver wishbone kind of scissor action. Uh, to get get yourself out of some some tight spots like this one here but it, I'll tell you what it's a great tool only the most essential get placed directly next to me at my bench so you hear them, you hear them clanging back and forth they're swinging on two hooks at right next to each other six inches above to my, my right knee right at my bench right next to my chair left hand side and my Drilled into my bench are my screwdrivers with my size zero Weeha, well, Weera, <laughs> right next to those. And until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was, uh, this was interesting. And what the hell grease was that? My God. Look at this. Looks like somebody shat all over my reel. Okay. Once again, if you're interested in this moisturizer, go to tackleadvisorsbeauty.com. And you too can get cancer today. And Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself.